Hey guys, this is Eric Weingartner with Weingartner Racing. Today's video is a product review video, but it's on a very different head. You don't, I don't often see these, and maybe you guys don't either. And probably the reason why you don't see them as often is because this head is extremely expensive. So, what is this head? Well, it's for a big block Chevy, but this is a spread port head, and it's from Brodix, and the part number is 1203. This is their 1203 casting for a big block Chevy. Now, what makes it different is this. If you look at the intake ports, they look like that. They are called a spread port head. Now, this is a different head, but I'll go ahead and tell you. Spread port heads move the ports apart because if you get a conventional big block Chevy head, the ports are together like the small block. Now, once they go from there, they usually have a long runner, which is this one usually, and a short runner. The spread port, what they did is they spread them apart. I think Warren Johnson might have been one of the earlier ones to do this in the old, old stuff. But anyway, things have evolved, and this is the spread port head. That's what this head is. Now, this one is a 1203. It's actually one of the more economical, although still very expensive, um, spread port heads you can get. So, how expensive is this head? The head itself, assembled with steel valves, runs you $5,200 at this, well, about a month ago. It's probably higher now. $5,200 for the head assembled. Now, that's with steel valves, by the way. If you think that's the only expensive part, it does require shaft rockers, and the shaft rockers that run it cost $3,500 at the time of this filming. That's an extremely large amount of money, and I know most of you are going, whoa, yeah, exactly. Because for that price, it's not even CNC ported. This is an ASCAST head. So, let's talk about some of the stuff for it. First off, it's a 12 degree valve angle. If you have a stock big block shave, it's 26 degree. Most aftermarket stuff's 24 degree. This one, 12 degrees. It's got a really small chamber. I'm not sure of the exact size. I didn't look it up. I think it's in the 70s. If they, if you ever notice when you look at product stuff, they will give you a smaller CC chamber when you use titanium valves. You might be asking yourself why the margin. The margin on the valve is actually, these are steel. The margin on the valve is actually thicker on the titanium and that thickness takes up space in the chamber, hence the chamber is smaller. So the intake valve size is 2.520 diameter and the exhaust valve is 1.62. Or sorry, I had to say that completely wrong. 1.86, sorry, on the exhaust. So 2.520, 1.86. They both have a 55 degree valve job from the factory on the intake and the exhaust. Um, they use a special alloy of theirs. It's a copper type alloy whenever they do 55 degree valve jobs from Brodix. So those come standard. Now, even though it's an as cast head, as you can tell, it does have some CNC work. It's got a nice CNC chambers. You have your CNC bowl blend. And on this side, you have CNC gasket match as well. So that's pretty much part of the head. It may look extremely large because this thing looks gigantic, right? But when I do measurements for it, because I believe what happened in case you're wondering is they took the 1201, which is the smaller CNC ported head and made it an as cast head and selling it as a 1203, um, I believe. This head is still not that big. It looks big, but let me tell you, um, the minimum pinch when I measured it was 4.4. Um, that's really not that big. It's, I mean, it's big, but compared to what you would think for this size of head, it's not that big. It's giving an idea. It's probably comparable to like a headhunter um, size for that. So if you look at the CCs, you're like, oh, that thing's huge. Because most people just look at the CCs. Totally worthless. Because it's the reason why the CCs are so much for this head is because the runner itself is long. I mean, you can kind of tell me like this. See how much distance it goes compared to a regular big block Chevy, so CCs are worthless. Cross section, 4.4. Like I said, about the same as a headhunter. Um, however, they claim this thing flows 536, which are like, wow, that's pretty good. I'm telling you right now, there's some things that could be done to help this out pretty easily. But again, this is a pretty expensive head. Anyway, I'll show you the flow sheet at the end, but I also wanna show some other stuff about it. This customer wanted them with stainless steel valves. This is the valve. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, I would highly recommend you buy titanium valves for this, at least for the intake. And the reason why is this thing is heavy. 
heavy, heavy, heavy. Um, also, these are some of the newer Brodux valves. Ever since COVID, like they've been getting weird ones. And you can kind of tell from this, not so much polished. Also, I could tell because I thought, and they used to do it this way, Brodux used to have a three, a two back cuts on a 55 degree valve job. So in other words, you'd have, I know they do on the BRX heads or maybe, they probably did on this initially too. And it might explain some of the flow loss. We usually have a 55, a 45, and then like a 30 degree back cut. So you have two back cuts and then the seat. This one only has one. If you also notice, it's more of a tulip type of design of valve. I typically don't do that, but I can see why they would. You might say, why would they? Well, if you notice how deep that bowl is, you've got a long spot to make it straight. So it's really easy for it to get the air to come out this way. However, there's a major disadvantage of that and that's weight. This adds a whole lot, excuse me, of material through here, and it makes this valve heavy. This valve is also almost seven inches long. In case you're wondering, I did weigh it. This valve alone weighs 232 grams, which might not mean much to you, but just to give you an idea, if I weigh a um, small block Chevy, take these two valves, actually, they're in there. If I weigh both those valves together, they're barely going to be in the 300s. Um, gram range. Actually, they won't even hit that. They're going to be like in the 270 range. I could take two LS valves, an intake and exhaust valve, and it will weigh less than this one intake valve. Um, an average conventional big block Chevy valve weighs about 160 grams. So this thing is way heavier even than that. So because of that, you have to have a pretty serious valve spring to control this deal. And they come this is the valve that spring that's with it. It's a triple. I'm not usually a fan of triples, but you don't have much of a choice controlling that much weight. Um, so it's got like 355 on the seat and 965 open. It's pretty stout and it has to be to control this amount of mass. Ideally, you would do titanium. Titanium would knock this weight down to about 130 grams. So you lose like 100 grams, which is huge. In case you're wondering, what is the exhaust valve heavy? Actually, no. This one right here, even though it's about the same length, 130 grams. See what I mean? 130, 230. So much heavier. This one's really, really light compared to that. So I'm not pretty entirely sure if this is in the hollow stem or something. Because for this weight, this length, I thought it'd be heavier, but it's pretty light. This one is heavy. So disadvantage, heavy, heavy. Also doesn't have a back cut. I uh, just has one. Ideally, if I was to, if you're like, what would you do with this head? Well, here's what I'd do. I've done videos before about knocking down this, just blending that CNC bowl blend you would gain. But also just from being on the flow bench, I probably could reshape the short side, contour this guide, and probably get up another at least 10 CFM. The back cut on the valve, another one, on the intake valve would definitely help um, the blow the flow, because it's, it's not great at all. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you at four, it's 280. That's crap. Um, that's good if it's a, and that's on a 4625 board. That's good if it was a conventional headed, small or medium port head, like a 350cc head for a conventional one. That's okay for that 400 number. That is not okay for this. This thing should have been over 300, mostly because of that back cut. And this little bit of blending, really the back cut. So. I did want to show this too, because this is a different the reason why this head's here. This is a DN9. This is my own. Eventually, someday I'll get time to put my own head and I can show it off. But um, I only have them just see and see the chamber because it's easier for me to get a piston to match that. However, what I wanted to show about it is the relation. So this is a 1203, but look how the valves are rotated. So this is similar to a big block Chevy. Like when you see a big block Chevy, they're never in line. So if you have an LS and stuff, the valves are in line. Big blocks rotate that over. And I thought this, this one would be more, but it looks like it might even be less of a turn than a regular big block Chevy. Maybe it's just slightly more, but it's definitely not that. Notice how much of a turn that is compared to this. If you ever listen to a Darren Morgan uh, video, he'll talk about that and power it's made by turning those. Typically, this brings in the higher RPM So compared to this. I think this is more of a superior design, but there are limitations. If you're in a lower RPM deal, I could see this one actually beating it. Um, anyway, 
Well, you want to see the flow sheet? Well, let me go ahead and get it out because it's uh, it's the highest flowing. I should point this out. It's the highest flowing peak flow uh, head I've had on this Thames bench ever. And I didn't even bother to put it on super flow because it won't keep up. However, it burned up my motor. One of the motors in the Sains bench. Um, got done flowing it and it sounded kind of weird, but I was like, it is moving a lot of air. And it's such a big port, I had to work the bench harder. But then I started smelling it. And currently I still smell it, the ozone from one of the burnt motors. So one of the motors decided to give up the ghost. Anyway, let's look at the flow numbers. Here are the flow numbers. This was a long runner, which would actually be this runner right here. Which, in case, just to help you out, because this is a different view. That's this one. This is usually the highest flowing port. And this one's the short runner, which is usually the lowest, lowest flowing port compared to the two. But because of the spread port design, it's a bit different than a regular short port. So I say this because, look, it doesn't even crack 500 CFM. It's supposed to flow 536. It doesn't even hit that on the long runner. On the short runner, though, yeah, it goes 540. Uh, granted, that's one inch valve lift. And I know several of you are like, no one runs a one inch valve lift. These guys that run these heads do a lot. Um, they'll be like 1.2. So trust me when I say no one cares, they do care for these. So this guy's probably going to be in the eight to 900 range. But regardless, this is what I mean. 278 at four in the long runner, that's pretty bad. I mean, it's not horrible, but it's not what it should be. It should be like 300 and 280 on the short on runner. So. That's better, but you get the idea. Um, 600 number is not bad. That's better than most conventional heads. Really, this head really picks up steam after 700 lift. And you can kind of tell at 700, you're at 457, 6, and 463, all the way up to 540. Exhaust, even though it's got a smaller exhaust valve, that's really good flow. That's without an exhaust pipe, too. And that's a nail head. Should have pointed that out, too. This exhaust is called a nail head. Look, it looks like a nail. Uh, good flowing ones would typically have tulip. tulips way more, but that's the reason why I get titanium. Anyway, there's your flow numbers. This is on a 4625 um, bore as well. Um, you can ignore these numbers up here. I don't bother changing that stuff. Um, anyway, hopefully you guys get something out of it. It's still a nice head. Very, very expensive, but I think there's a lot of potential. So if I was to port these... It probably cost you know, you know eleven hundred bucks for me to port these, but I think I could probably get. I know why you get the lower lift numbers up, especially if I could do an own titanium valve and own back cuts and stuff. Yeah, it'd be a huge difference. Probably get it in the five sixty range, even on that short or long runner. But anyway, still a very good head. These will make a lot of power. Great for larger cubic inches, and they really will do like nitrous. So anyway, also the CNC rolled this corner here. Um. The help of the nitrous stuff typically you see these on nitrous as well anyway long video sorry you guys uh take care remember i'm no superman